and we are back. Welcome to Shark Coast Tactical Podcast, episode 22, I think. We are here with a very special guest, Mike McGowan and Julie. They are from the Self-Defense Emporium and Veritas Training Academy. The Self-Defense Emporium and Veritas Training Academy. We also have our homies, Omar. Hello. Luke Andrews. What up? And the amazing Dean Carroll. Always. How you guys doing? Good. Thank you so much for coming here. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You're like a legend. <laughs> thanks. I don't know about that. But. Oh, yeah. You're a legend. No, it's, you're Mike McGowan. You've been, you've been doing this longer than I have. You've been involved. Like, you were old school when I, when I had an FFL out of my house. I think I'm just old. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever um, refused to train somebody? Refused to train somebody? Yeah. I've, uh, I ended up, like, I've kicked people out. You've kept for what? Just stupid crap. Like, like I take this seriously. You know, people come absolutely. Like I had a lady come in and sit down in front of me and and say, you know, in a private lesson when I was working, I take aim. Mm -hmm. Right, sit down and go. Right away, sit down and go. I just want you to know, I'm not one of them. Ooh. And I went, one of who? And she goes, she looks out out the door and she goes, those crazy gun people. I go, is that your gun? She goes, yeah. I go. You're one of them, right? And then she, <laughs> she she started in, I don't think I need, you know, I'm not one of those people that want third graders to take AK-47s to school in their backpacks and blah, 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 blah. And I just looked at her and said, get out. She's like, what? I'm like, get out. I don't need your money. Leave. It's like, no, I need to learn how to defend myself. And I was just like, I'm not going to put up this crap. I mean, then she started crying and then I let her stay. Oh my then, God. <laughs> then she came back the next week, told me she joined the NRA. So <laughs> you had a similar experience today, right, Will? I did. I had a sim I um I kicked a, a lady out today. I did. I've kicked more than one person out over the years, but I kicked like we had this nice lady come in and a nice lady and she was looking for stuff and I showed her some stuff and she was buying some stuff and then I walked by her and I noticed and she had um Harris Walls pins all up and down her <laughs> her purse. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at it and, and I, and I just, it really took me aback and, um, and I, I'm like, hold on a second. So I grabbed her stuff and I went in the back and I sat there for a second and I'm, and I asked everybody like, what do you think I should do? Cause um, I'm like, maybe I should call my wife. Cause usually, you know, if I do something stupid, I, I think about calling my wife first <laughs> So she sure. can say, don't do that. Yeah, she'll tell me, get in the house. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> put it down. Put, it, put, put it, down. it down. Get in the house. Put it down. Don't put that in your mouth. Don't, don't put that in your mouth. <laughs> Stop dancing. Um, but uh, so I didn't want to call her because she probably would have said, just let her buy it. But I, and then everybody else was like, no, fuck that. And I walked out and I said, I have the right to refuse. Um, any customer, any time, and I am not selling you anything. Um, and she's like, no. And I said, no. <laughs> she's like, why? I said, because you have your political affiliation being advertised all over your body. And she's like, but that's nothing. I said, you call us Nazis. Right. Like your side calls us Nazis right. a lot. And she's like, yeah, well, I mean, you guys kind of are. <laughs> oh, right. Time to go. Oh. Yeah, she said to me, like, well, not you. Yeah, not you. Not you, but they kind of are. I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, you can't use the word Nazi. <laughs> you can't, you absolutely cannot use the word Nazi. And um, and then she's like, well, can I come back later? <laughs> and I'm like, after the election. <laughs> <laughs> after the election, uh, maybe. And um, and she, she said, I really wish we could live together. And she's like, we could be neighbors. And I said, yeah, in the apocalypse, I will protect you. And and she's like, well, I'll protect you too. I'm like, not with my ammo. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and um, and it really, it, it got, like, I got into a, I follow um, like a famous band's guitar tech, like a band that is real famous. And, mm -hmm. and I followed them. Like, I remember when I was in high school, I, I, um, skipped school for a week and a half and followed this band all over Florida and, and into Georgia and almost didn't graduate high school. Oh. Like this is how much I've, I've liked this band and, and their guitar tech. I follow them and I can actually comment on his stuff. And he started 
with the Nazi shit. Ugh. And and I was like, look, man, you know it's what it's wrong. It's it, it's fake. Like there's no fucking people who call themselves Nazis. If you're not gonna, if you even really are a follower of white supremacy and who believe in the in the tenets of Adolf Hitler, you most certainly aren't gonna tell anybody. <laughs> you most certainly aren't, aren't going to aren't going to advertise it on social media because the feds will be right up your ass. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's, they're not going to come arrest you, but someone's probably going to come up and say, hey, you want to buy some grenades? <laughs> <laughs> hey, where are all your friends at? Can you hey, saw I, the shotgun off right here? Let's, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got uh, grenades? <laughs> Illegal machine guns? <laughs> right? I mean, but no, no, no real underground militia type white supremacist spouting that shit will advertise it. Right. No one's going to admit to it. And so just, but, but, but I, and then you had, so all these fucking famous people were fucking yelling at me on Instagram, like going, no, you guys are Nazis. And, and, and it really like broke my heart this morning. And then this lady comes in and I'm like, yeah, no, no. you guys think. And then she's like, yeah, you guys kind of are <laughs> tough, right? Yeah. Oh, what do you think, Dean? She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It's just as simple as that, right? It's that simple. It reminds me a lot of the people who like protest against police, and then as soon as something happens, they start calling the police. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. Yeah. You you you're against guns. You vote for policy that's against guns, and then as soon as shit gets starts getting a little heated, you're like, I need to get a gun. Exactly. Exactly. Why why was she here trying to buy ammo? She's here. Tr she she's here trying to buy ammo and firearms because she's afraid of what might happen in the election. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I told her straight up, I said, look, your part, I said, I said, I said, the Biden administration has, has the Biden Harris administration has shut down hundreds of gun shops, oh, yeah. hundreds. And I said, the only way that you can stay open under the Biden Harris administration was by having a perfect audit by the ATF, which we had one and, and, and other people in town did not. And they're closed. And, and she was like, yeah. I can see how that might be frustrating. <laughs> I'm like, how can, can you? I mean, can you really? Do you really? I said, do you understand like what, you know, they're, they're anti small business, but, and she's like, no, they're not. I said, yes, they are. They are complete. I, how can you? And well, she did grow up in a middle-class family. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Absolutely. Had a nice lawn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she, um, but then I, I said, then I said to her, I said, look, if you want to come back later when I've calmed down and talk politics, I will come and you come. I will sit down. And I will talk politics with you, but I'm not selling you ammo. And she's like, I'm not going to talk politics with you. And she left. There you go. I would have, I would have talked to her, but it was, that was, uh, yeah, that was tough. So tell me Mike, what, um, give me the history of Mike McGowan. Like, as I said before, like you, I, I, I don't mean to, um, and I, I'm, please don't think that I'm patronizing you or anything, but I've always thought you were kind of like a legend. Mm -hmm. Like when you were old school, when I first got into the game and like you were the trainer that everybody went to, everybody respected. And then all the little, the little hate shark coast, uh, gun shops out there, they were all your buddies and they all, they all, um, they, they were like, this guy is, is the man. And I'm like, Oh man, Mike McGowan, if I could only be his friend, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, and then that's, the, that's what I thought. And this was fucking 2011. And now it's it's 2024, and and you're still around, and you're still doing shit. So give me the history of Mike McGowan All right, so and Julie. So here's what happens. Like okay, like understand this. Okay, I have been very blessed to have really cool friends. Okay. All right. So like in my circle of people that are that mentor me, mm -hmm. like you know how you, you got a group of friends, and then one guy's got the little the younger brother who's a big pain in the ass, and you know like that. Well, right. That that's me. That's me and my mentor group. Like these guys, like I, I literally called my buddy once and said, hey man, I got a question. And he goes like this, he goes, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so friggin' bad, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But that, they're just world class. Like, did, did you ever know uh, Bob Kalati? Heard of him. All right, so he was one of my mentors, right? Okay. Like, he, he was a, a big part in my career way back in, in the early days, right? And I just have like really great people who mentor me, right? So when I was young, I decided that, like when I was 13 years old, that my goal in life was to be an airborne sniper. Okay. That, that was it. I wanted to sit in a tree, sleep with one eye open, and like shoot commies, right? That was, that was the goal. 
Okay. Got up, went through basic, you know, AIT, went to jump school. Was supposed to go to Italy, ended up in Germany on a friggin' nuclear missile base. Like, okay. wonderful, right? Left there and fortunately went to the 101st Airborne. Got to go through sniper school, live my dream as a platoon sniper, stuff like that. Never deployed, so, you know, don't ask me, you know, no how many stories. people I killed. Like, I didn't, I didn't deploy. We went to Egypt. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, hey, it's hot. You know what I mean? But at least you're honest. Get out of there. And uh, literally went, like, because when you get out of the military, like, you got to go to unemployment. Go, go there right away because you'll collect while you're getting a job or whatever. I'm like, all right. So I go there and the lady asked me what I does. And she says, she, she literally said this when she goes, well, there's two, two people you can work for. All right. You can work for the police department. Okay. Or you can work for the mafia. Like, <laughs> she goes, <laughs> wow. She goes, one pays more, the other one's got a better. Benefit package. And I'm like, ah, that's why I went to work for a sheriff's department. <laughs> Where was this? Up in Massachusetts. Okay. All right. So I spent that's the accent. doing corrections there and then uh, left. All right. Had some issues. But uh, <laughs> what were the issues? Wait, what time? How many, what year is this? Yeah, so <laughs> just uh, what were the issues? Disagreements. Disagreements. With inmates. Whatever. Ah, so, common. Very common. It's so like my, my, like, Infantry, hockey mentality didn't do well with. So you got in fights. Fucking idiots. Um, you got in fights. Yeah, stuff. Right. So people, people fell into things, probably. Like, like this. I got called down to the sheriff's department. Right. So I understand okay. that I worked in the hole. I worked in segregation. Okay. So all black. Right. So lieutenant says the sheriff wants to see you. I'm like, about what? And he's like, just go see him. So I walk in and the uh, the receptionist looks up. She looks at me. Says, "Can I help you?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm here." Uh, Sheriff wants to see me. I'm Mike McGowan. She's like, "Oh, go in. He's waiting for you. He's on the phone, but he told you to, told me to send you." And I'm like, "All right." So I go in. You know, stand at parade rest. And he, he gives me one of these. He goes, and I'm like, "Yeah, Mike McGowan. You want to see me?" And he goes like this. He goes, "He goes, you're Mike McGowan." And I'm like, "Yes, sir." He goes, "There must be a mistake." And I'm like, "Okay." And I left. <laughs> <laughs> and I went back and you know LD's like what'd he say he said he, I go he looked at me he giggled he said there must be a mistake and I laughed he goes there's no mistake I'm like I'm telling you what the man said you know what I mean it's like <laughs> alright you know, alright all right. it's like you're gonna ask me about stuff like that it's not like I was beating people to death or anything like that but there was definitely some like the all like all these you know murderers and whatever they're all calling their mothers and telling I was intimidating them. So there was too many problems. I had to leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I left, came down here, left here, went up there, went back, and then ended up working at SIG. All right. So as I was at SIG, I started, decided I want to do more teaching like I was doing in the military. So I got my instructor thing and started doing like classes, stuff like that. At SIG in New Hampshire? Yeah. Okay. Like I started the range department at SIG Sauer. Oh, wow. Not... Not designed it, not built it, but I used to work in, like, assembly, okay? Okay. So my buddy that I went to high school with, then I was at the 101st with, he was in um, the battalion over, right? He asked, I was over there because I went up to test out for oldie stockbroking, and I missed the 52 by 1 thing, and they won't let you retest it, so I had to get a new job. So he's like, you want to shoot for SIG? I'm like, yeah. Like, I didn't know, you know. So I go there, right? Um in a couple of years, like, leave, but while I was there, I told my buddy, I said, listen, the assembly department just takes the guns in and they shoot them, right? I go, every morning, we're going to go in and we're going to get the guns. And then we're going to take the carts and we're going to bring them in the range. We're going to load all the magazines. We're just going to shoot all day long. He's like, you think we'll get away with that? I'm like, trust me, I got a plan. I got a plan, right? So what happened is we do that for a week and then we start signing all the paperwork instead of assembly department, we sign it um, range department. Right. And then a week later, like, hey, uh, they need to see the range department for a meeting in the assembly. And, like, <laughs> and then we were the range department. Right. But then to put the icing on a cake, I was like, look, we got to seal this deal. Right. So I went, I went to the head of the assembly department. I said, listen, man, we're ruining our clothes with all the oil and everything, shooting off the guns. You know, I said, like, is there anything we get? And he was like, and I had in mind what I wanted. He's like, yeah, we'll get you guys some cover off. Like, oh, no, man, it's hot in there. You know, we can't. How about these uh, rip stop black? Uh, Uniforms, right? So we got black BDUs, ripstop, and we really? wore them. And then we were the range department. 
Okay. So we used to shoot, like on a normal day, we shoot like 15 to 1,500 to 3,000 rounds a day, right? If we did um, what's called marathon shoots, they used to have us shoot until we break the guns. Like that's, Sig used to test the guns like that. Like, used to. Well, I don't know. I'm not there anymore. So I don't, like, I don't want to be like, shit, shit, don't do shit. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't know what they do now. You know what I mean? I haven't been there for a while, you know, but back in, you know, 97 and 98, like I've seen 42,000 rounds loaded in magazines stacked in 250 round tubs. And you would just stand there, right? And what they would do is they, they would make 100 guns. Basically, they shoot like 20 of them. Okay. And then they take five of those 20 and we shoot them till they break. We just keep shooting the friggin' guns till they break. How long would that take back then? And I assume like these are 226s, 229s. Oh, yeah. Like those things, 227. Those things don't break. They used to just kill us. Right? That sounds like a pain in the ass. Yeah, but I mean, that's why the 226 is the friggin' 226. Right. You know what I mean, like this is what they do you shoot 250 rounds through it and they cool it. We shoot another 250 through it. And the, like while they're doing that, we're shooting another gun. So they just, they just rotate them through, right? So the second 250, then they would cool it and clean it. Right, next two fifty, cool it. Next one, they would take it and put it in the Magnaflux. What's a Magnaflux? It's a it's a X ray machine for metal. Okay. So they could see if there's any stress anywhere. Okay. Right, and if there was something wrong with the part, they just redesigned the part, and then we'd start all over again. Oh fuck! Oh yeah, right. that's how they used to do. It. I mean, we would shoot like I've shot twelve thousand rounds in a day. Jeez. Damn. Okay. Let's hear from muscle memory, huh? Yeah, it was. It was. But aren't you aren't you a Glock guy though? Actually, like, are you not like a Glock guy? Because I mean, because Nate is like a big part of how we know you too. Shark Coast knows you is through Nate, our gunsmith. Yeah, who does not like to be named. We name him all the time on here. <laughs> Nate um, doesn't want to be named. He does not want to be named. Nate. Oh, poor Nate. Yeah, he doesn't. Nate. I didn't know Nate. that. Nate. 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 He's a great Nate. the gunsmith. Yeah, <laughs> the for Shark Coast. Shark Nate. Coast? He doesn't want to be named. He doesn't want to be outed on the on the podcast. All right, let's not do that though. No, we don't. don't. Anybody say Nate? We never do it. No more talking, Nathan. <laughs> Oh, we never talked about. I'm glad I know that, so I'm not going to say Nate anymore. Right, so <laughs> but he, but he is, he is, you know, Glock till he dies, and and I, I thought he got that from you, and you guys are all Glock people. I well, thought that's what you recommend. Like I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big sick guy, and that I love to, you know, just rub Nate the wrong. Oh, so what's that guy's name? Whatever that guy's, name, like to rub him the wrong way with that. You know what I mean? But you know, I'm, I'm a big Glock guy because uh, we shoot the GSSF. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of that. You know, and working, doing other stuff. Like, you got to have a Glock 19 because everybody has a Glock 19 or Glock 17 when they're working and stuff like that. So, you know, I like my Glocks, you know, not as much as, like, my kids like their Glocks. So my sons are Glock people just, I think, because they hate me or whatever. But, <laughs> you know, wow. yeah, I'm a big Glock fan. I'm a big Glock fan. But you like the 226. Yeah, I mean, 226 is, you know, it's 226 is real big for me because I'm, you know, almost a midget or whatever. You know? Me too. So, like, 229, like, I like the 229. It's a little bit. Shorter, it's better to carry. You know, I have, I'll tell you this, uh, 239, you know 239? Yep. I got the fifth one ever made. Oh, wow. Yeah, don't let me do inventory, inventory on a weekend because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's this? I want to buy this, $192 in the employee purchase program. Okay. Yeah, but that's one of the, that's what I want. My buddy screwed me, though. We opened up a box, right? It was three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, whatever, to make a box of 10, right? Yep. One, two, and four were missing. I said, I'm going to get number three. He goes, hey, man, would you mind if I got that? I'm like, no, nah, screw it. Yeah, you'll have it. I'll get five. He goes, okay. I got five. He get a 226. I was freaking pissed. Because <laughs> so, the president and vice president could have been me. Exactly. So what happened uh, after SIG? Like, where'd you go? I uh, came down here for a little bit and did some stuff. Um, you know, then I ended up working up in Tampa in a gun shop. You know, what gun shop in Tampa? It was called uh, Discount Guns. Oh, okay. No idea, but that's all right. Yeah, it was, a, it was like, it was pretty good for Tampa. Like, then the owner just didn't want to do it anymore. You know? I understand that. <laughs> yeah. I understand I that. I bet you do, you know. Oh, yeah. it, he was running, it was a pretty good gun shop, you know what I mean? So it was like, that's when I saw, like, you could actually sell a lot of freaking guns in a gun shop. Uh -huh. you know what I mean? And uh, it, it, was, it was a good shop. It was a really good shop, you know, and then... Uh, I went down, started that take aim, and I've been down and take aim since 2005. Then I left last year to do the Emporium. So you're there at 20 years. 18, yeah. 18, and, and doing classes on the side. Yeah, I've been a I've been a full time instructor since uh, 
2008. So it's not like, you know, it's not like I'm doing something on a weekend or something like that. It's what you do. It's what I do. And plus, you know, we were doing other classes, but I was getting mentored, you know, um, like we'll just call him DRV, like Dirty Rap Bassett was like one of the greatest warriors America's ever trained. And I was fortunate enough to be put under his wing. Okay. Right? And he's, he's the, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, like it's just, you know, it's just a freaking question, man. Like, you know, like, I'm thinking, what, you know, what green bullet do you like for five, five, six? Oh man, you just killing me you know like <laughs> what grain bullet did he like for five five six he likes like 77 i think or something like that you know? okay I'm just and know. where does where does julie come in all right so 2008 oh here we go well let me tell how i how i met you first okay you tell how you met me okay. I'll, I'll tell you i met my husband in high school he taught me how to hunt with a shotgun and rifle and i got to be pretty good with it with a rifle with a scope on it we go hog hunting and deer hunting and dove hunting and this is in florida oh yeah and okay. he was like grizzly adams man craig was a beast yeah i went to riverview high school oh wow I met him so anyhow he taught me how to do this and i loved hunting loved camping um and then we had a daughter who went through you loved camping in florida oh i did yeah okay yeah yeah that's a bold <laughs> statement <laughs> we could go in the winter times so, okay obviously yeah. yeah yeah obviously so um our daughter went through the police academy and after she graduated from college and uh, she had to learn how to fire a, a pistol. Mm -hmm. And so my husband said, hey, Julie, you need to learn how to shoot a pistol, too. I said, OK, honey, teach me how to shoot a pistol. Oh, my God. He was the worst with a handgun. He didn't teach me about lining up my sights. He didn't teach me how to hold the gun properly. And so I was shooting into the ground, shooting into the ground, missing and everything. He said, you're shooting in the ground. I said, no, 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 I, I didn't get it. So he went to his truck and he got a roll of duct tape, s taped my hand up to the gun so I wouldn't let go anymore. <laughs> so I waited patiently while he taped up my hand. When he got done, I said some very unkind things to him, <laughs> got back in the truck and I said, I'm going to get lessons. That's when I met McGowan. That was almost 18 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day when men were men. <laughs> Greg, Greg is like, definitely a manly man. I'll think. Never You're going to learn. We're going to tape your hand. <laughs> it was so bad. It was so bad. So let, so let me tell you about Julie going to instructor school. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so what happens is, like, when I started Veritas, I started with my friend Jesse Young, right? So our, we actually started Veritas just to train women. Okay. Ah, interesting. Okay. I couldn't handle. That's smart. Well, I couldn't handle stupid guy stuff. You know what I mean? Understand. Like, you hear it all the time. Well, my husband told me I needed to get, you know, stuff like that. So I came out and there was a guy saying stupid crap. And I, like, I was mocking him. I'm like, well, why don't you have a five shot revolver? <laughs> He's like, well, I got a Glock 21. You know, like, well, aren't you afraid it's going to jam? Because that's why he said she shouldn't have one. My Glock never jammed. And I'm just like, right, at this point, it's not even fun anymore. So, it's, <laughs> so I left. I called my buddy. I said, we're going to start, we're going to start a training company where we're going to train women. We're going to do one class called Women with Weapons. That's all we're going to do, right? Ah, so you thought of the name. Yeah, it was, it was okay. handguns, handgun, shotgun, rifle, all in one night. Like okay. Just a familiarization, you know? And we, what we do is we put them under a lot of stress. Like, we show them how easy the platforms are to use. We do shotguns last, so they're all jacked up, you know, stuff like that. And, and everyone that's been, almost every, I won't say everyone, but almost everyone that's been through the class is all... They go home, they tell me they can't sleep at night, you know, stuff like that. Like, oh, man, I was so jacked up, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's just a great class, and it's a fun class to teach. But then we ended up training men, which was, uh, you know, so now, you know, we do everything. So what happened is Julie's coming in for lessons, and Jesse and I are doing a thing, and I'm talking to Jesse. I'm like, hey, you see this lady I'm training, right? She's, she's getting really good. You know, she's a teacher. I go, I think we should ask her to be our instructor. She was going to be the first instructor we hired, Right. Just like, hey, I think it's a good idea, blah, 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 blah. Right. So I go and I say, hey, I want to talk to you about something. Uh, Jess and I have been talking, and we think that, you know, we want you to be an instructor. We want you to go and instruct. Oh, no. Oh, I'm not good enough. I don't know about that. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, probably what, three weeks later? Yeah, about that. Three weeks later, she calls me, and this is what she says. I just want to let you know I've forgotten all about this. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> she says, Oh, yeah, I'm down here, and the instructor guy says I should go to instructor school. He's going to put me through instructor school. He's going to train me. And I'm like, really? <laughs> right? And the guy freaking calls me. Like, where, where is their instructor school? Well, what it is is Julie is an NRA counselor. Okay. All right, so, like, counselors 
higher than instructor. Okay. So she certifies it. So it's almost like she's my boss. Uh, oh, no. No, no. I, I am bossy. I am not Mike's boss. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. So like we do instructor schools and stuff like that, right? Oh, okay. Inst NRA instructor school. Yeah. Okay. So, do the, yeah, got it. She had to go to Washington, right? You had to go to Washington. Um, Virginia. Virginia for, for hers. But um, so the guy, the guy actually called me and goes, oh, Mike, I just want to tell you that you did a great job training her. And I'm like, seriously. I'm like, <laughs> so I call her and say, some jackass that's not qualified to carry my freaking range bag just called me to tell me what a great job I did, you know, <laughs> so that I feel good about myself, I guess. Uh, you know, so I just want to let you know, forgotten yeah. all about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did it make you feel good about yourself? He made, yeah, he did. It was because I wasn't feeling very good. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, thank you. Now I feel. So good about myself. <laughs> so she, she trained um, an NRA instructor without you? Yeah. How'd that make you feel? I was a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> but I've forgotten all about it. I get it. I get it. I get it. So then, then she came and worked for you guys? Yeah. And then. Or she worked, she worked for. No, she never. No, because that. No. If she said, I'm going to be his instructor, that would have. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So she's been with me since 2008. Wow. So you're old school too. Yeah. Really old school. So um, how did you meet Nate? Take aim. Take aim. So what, he was like going in there? Yeah, he was coming in as a customer. And we just, we just became friends, like really good friends. And then we sent him through instructor school. And then Oh, you sent Nate to instructor school? Nate used to teach with me. Was he well, a good he teacher? He started taking up all his time. <laughs> it's important right yeah he's an he's an integral part of our of our place like like i'm proud to have him yeah he's like he doesn't watch the show does he no he probably no right, it, nate, it's probably beneath him nate's fucking brilliant <laughs> like he seriously is brilliant i wouldn't go that far but yeah he's like nate nate does a lot of stuff like like nate's my plumber like, well, so I have to call Nate and say, Nate, it sounds not working. Can you come over and just <laughs> turn it? Can you turn it to so stops? He is a plumber. Yeah. But he won't fix our plumbing. <laughs> he won't, like, if something goes wrong with our plumbing, he won't fix it. <laughs> like, like, he goes, you know I'm not a plumber, right? And I go, you work for the water department. He goes, that's, got, that's not a plumber. <laughs> I go, oh, I don't know, know the difference. Like, <laughs> They can do it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's really good at catching dogs. <laughs> Why, they run away and stuff? Oh, my God. Like, my fucking... Like, so, I've got... So, my dog, um, Duke, you know, he's 15 now, and but he's a master of escaping. Like, he <laughs> he broke through... Um, like, he would jump through the glass of our, of our house. Oh. And he did it seven times. Like, he through would the, just... Through the window. Through the window. And we had to put Hurricane Cat 5 glass through all of our house. Just so he won't jump through the window. Yeah, yeah, we have hurricane glass, like, and we bought it during COVID, so we had the money. Like, like some guy heard me talk about it on one of the live videos, and he's like, "I got the solution." I'm like, "Really? What is it? Training? No, hurricane glass." <laughs> <laughs> so like when he jumps, he hits it, and he'll learn soon. First, or first time he jump, he tried it, boom, and yeah, he didn't do it anymore. <laughs> but this guy, these dogs, these these dogs have traditionally gotten out like over the years, and 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 like. I've either been, I can't remember where I was last time, but I think I was out of town. And yeah, I think it was SHOT Show last time. It was SHOT Show? I think so. Oh, yeah. it was fucking SHOT Show day yeah. one. Yeah. It was SHOT Show day one, and 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 it's it's opening opening of the SHOT Show, and it's busy as fuck, and a neighbor calls me and says, your dogs are out. And the kids are supposed to be watching the house, and kid number one like the oldest who's watching the house walked out without locking the door the fucking one the german shepherd opened it with his nose right <laughs> and all the dogs got out right and and so nate found one of the dogs in a drainage ditch and he's in his gi <laughs> right he's in his gi he's in his his his, his jujitsu gi and he's in and he's in flip-flops and my dog is in a drainage ditch like 10 feet down <sighs> And and he somehow probably Superman jumped down and chased him, and this is when Duke could run, <laughs> and then Duke, and 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 then got him, used something for to to get him into his car, and then when he got him into his car, he did the <laughs> and fucking polluted his whole car. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> like the whole thing was was black and stinking, and I and and I'm just self, such a selfish bastard. We're at Shot Show, and we're making money. I'm like, thank God, my dogs. And and I'm, I'm making. And Lori's like, I, th I really think we should pay for it to get his car detailed. <laughs> like, why would we do that? What that old Nissan? Why? No, I think it. Yeah, I the think Pathfinder, it was the, right? It, it was. No, it he was. Just got his. Uh, oh, he his just. Yeah. He just got the car. Oh. <laughs> he just got that brand new car. The car from his mom, and 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 I'm like, oh no, he he doesn't. He's like, no, honey, you need. It stinks. <laughs> but I think the bad thing is we waited a couple of days and then we got it done. But <laughs> just my yeah. first week working here, that happened too. I showed up to. It's my first week working the sales floor. And I show up to work, and I just got dropped off before I had a car. I'm walking to go clock in, and then I just see Nate bust the door open, toss me back, and go, you, you're with me. We're going to find a dog. <laughs> <laughs> before I even made it into the building, he just starts driving me to your neighborhood to find it. I've never felt so much purpose than showing up to work and being greeted with a bag in my face and going, you, you're with me. It's, it's like great. being Robin. Oh, it was great. It was awesome. I mean, countless times over the years. Countless. Like, what, like... Like we, like one time the, where's he at? Like uh, the new puppy uh, got lost and it, he was lost for, for like, a, like two days. And, and I think Nate drove around looking for him for eight hours. I did too. But yeah, so he's like the dog rescuer. All right. So nice. first of all, where's, where is the dog? Uh, they're probably all in the back. There's three. Okay. In the back. <laughs> we're, probably, we're talking about losing dogs. And you're like, where's the dog? <laughs> ah, whatever. So Nate drives around. <laughs> no, there's a, there's a, everything's secured, so they can't get out. That's, that's something I've learned. Like, if you secure the building, they can't get out, and you don't have to worry about it. Oh, so that's what Nate's talking about. He's like, lock the freaking doors, and all the dogs will get out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, just, just, just want to keep up with everything. How is he as a trainer? What's that? How was he as a trainer? He's good. He wasn't like a hateful bastard. Well, Nate's a hateful bastard. He's kind of grumpy. <laughs> yeah, but it's. I mean, I love the guy, but he's kind of. No, he's Nate's good. Like, cause one, he's, you know, he's patient, which I know that you're, you're like, are you talking about? You know who we're talking? About? Nate, <laughs> the gunsmith, a tattoo, like, yeah, Nate. I don't, know. you know, he's 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 very good. You know, like the classes that we teach, you know, a lot of them like aren't that hard to be with the students like we have a lot of we we do a lot of classes where it's one-on-one -on -one instructors for the whole class so we'll have 10 people we'll have five instructors okay so if you and i go to one of those classes you're firing line one i'm firing line two so while you're shooting i'm loading when i'm shooting you're loading but we have the same instructor for the whole class Wait, was this all done at take aim or, or was it off-site no we did so a lot we do a lot of stuff off-site okay so you, you can't do fucking five people in you know, well, well, in, in take aim, we, we run classes when it closed. Okay. So we were running, you know, we'd have women with weapons class with like, I don't know, 14 women in the class, you know, anywhere from like six to 14 like that. So we run, you know, final line one, final line two, stuff like that. Is there still value in getting a concealed carry permit? I mean, I have mine. I'll always have mine. Like, uh, like what's the value so the yes so the answer is yes and what the value is is one i leave the state of florida okay and if you go some other state right we are not reciprocal because we live in florida we're reciprocal because we have a florida concealed weapons license 100 percent. yep so if i have one and julie doesn't i can carry she can't because they don't give a shit what our laws are they give a shit what their laws are and we have to go by their laws and a lot of people don't understand that like you go someplace else you better check you know what the laws are because the whole that's the way we do it in florida that ain't <laughs> someplace else. that might not fly in alabama right you know they don't give a shit like think if somebody came down here and said well that's the way we do it in new jersey that is like what thing, would you say that is the thing not to say at the shop <laughs> yeah, right. you know what i mean like don't give a shit how you do it. We don't it. give a shit. Right. Dude, that's, that is like the number one thing not to say here. Right. Plus, it's like this. If I get in a situation, I want whoever comes with a gun and a badge to know that I've at least had a background check done on me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get my gun from my buddy and right. stick it in my pants. You know what I mean? So, like, I just think you should have your concealed weapons license if you're going to carry, even though you don't need it in the state of Florida. Do you guys have yours? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Is it valid? Valid, oh, yeah. and when it expires, I plan on renewing it. Mine's not valid. No? No. <laughs> it's not valid. You got a yeah. fake one? Or? <laughs> I got a fake one. It, it, it's not that I... At the gun show. 
it's, it's, it's not that I. It, it's not that I, I. I'm just irresponsible to the point of where I'm. I've let my life get too busy to renew it. Yeah. And I. But I should probably get. I'll get my assistant on tomorrow. I'll make her do it. It's just. I. I, I think it's just something you should have. Absolutely. And not because I teach a class that says, here's a certificate to get your concealed weapons license. You know, I just think you should have it. No, I think I, I'm in total agreement, and I bet the guys are too, that, that if something happens, you want the responding officer to see that you've at least had a background check and some type of training. Right. You know, yeah. plus, plus how many people do you come in here that want to take their gun home, right? And you go, well, you have to have a concealed weapons license to take it home today. Yeah, you don't need a concealed weapons license in Florida. Like, <laughs> every day. <laughs> right? Every day, right? And they want to yeah. argue it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like that. Like I just think you should have your concealed weapons license. Do you guys see it more? Like, or do people not have their concealed weapons permits as much anymore? Um, I feel like they still have them, but I feel like people, a lot of people, say they're not going to renew it because they they don't need it. But I tell them, I say, hey, you're not going to be able to, you know, skip the three day wait. Yeah, every it. every time I buy firearms. Yeah, <laughs> you I own the place. <laughs> no, still it is. Yeah. It's in the safe in the back. We'll put your name on it. <laughs> <laughs> the compliance guy holds it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't Don't let it. him take it. Don't let him take it. How many people do you think you've trained in the past since eighteen years? Tens of thousands. Really? Yeah. Tens of thousands. Yeah. I had no idea it was that big. I just knew you were a legend. It's like one teaching that take aim. Um, we were running concealed weapons class twice a week. And there mm -hmm. were times, there were times where we would have 50 people in that classroom. That's a lot. Oh, the fire marshal wasn't watching it. Cause <laughs> like literally my instructor, right? If I had instructors with me, they would have to stand outside. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, literally people sitting at the desk I'm teaching from. And how do you advertise? I don't advertise. You, you advertise. I, 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 I got a, <laughs> there's a paper over there. Yeah. I advertise like a motherfucker. Well, things like once once the Emporium opens up, you're going to see a lot of stuff about us training people and stuff like that because we have the capacity to do so much stuff. Like it, like I really want you to come see it. Oh, I'm going. I'm coming. And I want to put you on that freaking simulator. Absolutely. Oh, you'll love it. <laughs> freaking simulator yeah. is out of control. Yeah, I have a hundred thousand dollar Sony PlayStation. I can't get any of my friends to come play with me. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> Julie, what do, you, what do you think the state of women with firearms is? And I ask this, like something that we could really better our shop in is like we're not very good with women. Okay. Like, so I, I'll confess, like, so if a girl comes in here, I immediately like, I won't. I'm scared to death of my wife. And so if I talk to a girl, like I, I am, I'm like, I've got this innate fear of, I, I can't talk to a girl. Shut the cameras off. <laughs> it doesn't matter. She'll know. <laughs> so I, I generally won't talk to um, females that much. I'll talk to older ladies and stuff, but like women my age or, or younger, um, I tend to not gravitate towards them and I make the guys do it, but like, we're not very good and not that many um, women come in here to, to buy firearms yeah. a little bit here and there, but it's not a, it's, it's probably 5%. Yeah. So really? yeah. Don't you guys think? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Probably about 5%. Yeah. Well, the last one came in, you threw out. I did. <laughs> I did. Do good to get into 6%. That's all I'm saying. You know, I had a, I had a, man, I had a fucking like, uh, like some, some movie came and interviewed me yesterday about um about like what it means to be an american and 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 what how our gun shop is and i was i was talking about our gun shop is very inclusive um <laughs> <laughs> i did i told i said we, we 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 include everybody but man i as long as you're not a Harris supporter. <laughs> <laughs> well, the big thing is a lot of women are getting into shooting now because they want Still. self defense. So, yeah, yes, a lot of women are. Then where are they going? Where are they buying guns at? Um, a lot. Shoot of, straight. Yeah. Thought they were coming from here. I yeah, know. I thought they were coming from here. Maybe they come. Maybe I just have those blinders where I don't see. I can't look at the women, and I just yeah, don't. so you don't get in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they're actually buying guns from us. I just don't know. I don't know it. Yeah, well, the big thing that um, women resent is if somebody's talking down to them or um, thinks they can't handle a, a, like a semi-automatic. Um, because I've got a bunch of Glocks, a bunch of Sigs, I've got a Canic. I've got, I mean, it's it's easy. It's much easier than a than a revolver. And so, 
we just want you to talk to us and um, educate us. So, um, but not talk down to us because we can do this. So you think it's, it's, it's just a matter of talking? Talking, yeah. Correctly just, talking to a woman. And listening to them and finding out why they want the firearm. Is it just for target practice? Do they want to compete or do they actually want to carry concealed and learn how to defend themselves? Because there are a bunch of us out there. I usually, what I do, and I've always done, is I look at the person's body type. Like, I look at their hands. I look at how big they are. I look how strong they are. Lori, don't listen. And then, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I check out their body. <laughs> Top to bottom. <laughs> Top to bottom first. We don't like that. But. I, got, I got a hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I look at their hands, and, and, and I... And I it, depending upon how strong, I, like I, I how, how how much hand strength do you have? Do you have arthritis? Do you have a little bit of arthritis? And then I go to the gun from there. Okay. And then I, I, I ask like, what do you want to do with it? Is it concealed? Okay? If it's if it's um, a younger woman, it's automatically Glock forty three X or three sixty five. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the only thing we 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 sell here is is concealed carry guns. Um, you know, we have everything else, but those are our two go tos. Just those two: macro three sixty five. 43x we have the other ones but they're just for show <laughs> <laughs> they are just so we could say we're well-rounded <laughs> would you would you guys agree yeah uh, 100%. 100%. it's just for show <laughs> no 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 don't look in that case come down <laughs> no it's get away from there and if they're really rich then we say staccato <laughs> <laughs> no i mean by andrews it doesn't yeah. matter <laughs> yeah, that's true <laughs> I've seen some people come in here and say, I've got a budget of $500. And, and he sells them $3,000 yeah. $3, yeah. to Connor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so, um, but yeah, I, I usually do that. Um, but I think it's, it's still a, it's an area that we probably could use a lot of improvement on. Mm -hmm. um, you could also carry some purses, concealed carry purses. God damn it. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that. <laughs> Well, I prefer that is one of the that is one of the number one questions. Like, you, why don't you have purses? Why don't you have girl stuff? Yeah, I'm like, because it's girl stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's much better to carry on our bodies, but we don't always dress where we can carry on our bodies. I normally carry either my SIG or my Glock appendix, uh, but sometimes I can't, so I have it in my purse. That's something I've always wondered because you hear the argument a lot of if somebody's going to rob you, they're going for your purse first. Maybe we should get fanny packs. Fanny packs. I could get into that. I like. I like. <laughs> I'm a connoisseur of fanny packs. <laughs> I fucking love those things. Do you have one? Do I have a fanny pack? Yeah. Yes, I have a fanny. Pack. I have. See, like, you've I, got one too, don't you, Eric? Ever <laughs> see? Here's the deal. Like when K Bar. Remember when K Bar came out with a fanny pack? No. Like a bunch of people make it. It's the one with the little. It's got like a. It looks like it's got a, like a little pocket. Okay. But it's triangle on the side, so the friggin' you could fit a. 17 in it yeah i was like you can't put a gun in that and i was like oh look how big it is actually and so i go get the biggest freaking blue gun i could get and jammed in i'm like oh that works pretty well <laughs> so i got one of them yeah i can't put a 17 in mine you gotta get i'm telling you you gotta see these <laughs> look, it just looks like you're you know a little european tourist tourist guy you know what i mean <laughs> so you go like look what i got what give me go everything got all i got is this what's your go-to concealed carry Mine? Yep, right now. 43, you, 43X. 43X, the new one or the old one? Uh, I have an old one. I yeah, so without the the light rail. Yeah, I don't have the light rail. Do you, so you got no light guy. Do you use the shield mags or no? Yeah, I use... Um, no, actually, you know what I use is the PSA mags. Okay, <laughs> nice. Because I had a shield mag and I had one of the first ones and it didn't work and they're like, you got to put a metal mag and I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, so I have a shield mag but it, I found that the PSA mags haven't giving me any problems so i like the 365 xl with a red dot that's what i usually carry um today i've got my glock in my bag so i'm going to be competing this weekend with my glock 19 so i've been using that lately and you so you carry glock 19 in your purse sometimes and sometimes oh you penix carry a glock I do. 19 yeah i do rock on <laughs> see yeah see omar i can't do it <laughs> how can you not do it I got a stick of that tiny thing. You're the fucking, you're like the, you're really, really small. Dude, I got to wear a, put a second shirt in Florida just to conceal a 43X. I, I can't do the 19. Dude, you could put a rare end to a Buick in your pants and nobody would see it. <laughs> 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 sit, sit here like this, you know, 
Keltec P32 or whatever, stick it out like, hey, guys, got a gun on. Like, <laughs> Dude, I'm fat. Knock it off. So you guys have been in the concealed carry game for a while. Yeah. How was, uh, like, the influx of, re- like, red dot sights on carry guns? Is that something you guys immediately went to, or were you skeptical at first? Um, well, yes, I was skeptical at first because I'm just like, well, you, know, you know, I'm old. Why do I want some fancy Dancy thing, you know, yeah. cheating. Yeah, that was my yeah. favorite. Like, so I looked at it first time I shot one, I was just like, oh, this is it. This is the future right here. Yeah. Right? And then you have to, you just have to listen to all the stupid crap. Like, I'm so tired of stupid crap. <laughs> one thing I'm not looking forward to when we open is stupid crap. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. <laughs> there's a lot of that. You know, in that same vein, I feel like, uh, Red dots obviously kind of rose very fast. Now what I'm seeing is every company's coming out with a compensated carry gun. What do you feel about compensators on them? Well, first, um, like compensated, I don't have anything. I don't have any shit to talk about compensated guns. Like I'll have compensated guns sooner or later. As far as the carry guns go, uh, I don't know. They're extra loud, like for one, you know. Like, guns are loud. So I was going to say, what, guns aren't loud already? Yes, guns are loud. <laughs> right, compensated really loud. You know what I mean? But as far as that, like, you know, there's always going to be somebody that comes right out and says, oh, you can't do that. Like, I used to be a big, oh, don't get a compensated gun because you won't be able to see if you're shooting at night. Right? And then I shot one at night, and I'm just like, oh, I can see fine. You know, like, nobody else can. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, you know, like, when I... Like, here's, here's one thing about not having a compensator, okay? Like, and this is, like, a very stupid fact. So don't make me the guy that says this, but, like, the Miami gunfight. Yeah. Okay? Right, the Miami gunfight, right? We need a genuine good movie of the Miami gunfight. Yeah, like a real one. Like, we need a real good movie. Not, like, not the, like, they've had a couple of them, you know, but not to totally take away your... Your store. I just hijacked your story <laughs> to talk about something that's important to me. Right, like, God damn it! Where's the fucking movie for the Miami gunfight? Yeah, fact. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right, the Miami gunfight. Go but the cops that survived said just being in front of the Mini 14 and 556, just being in front of it was traumatizing. Not getting hit with it, just being there when it shot. That the the muzzle blast and everything like that from being up close is so traumatizing, all right? I've never had anybody shoot directly at me, all right? I've been next to shit that has gone off that I wasn't happy about going off, but, you know, the trauma of that compared to of it coming back towards me without hearing protection on it is, that's all I got. If you're looking for something, why not to, that's all I got. Besides that, put a fucking car in front of you, Keeps the recoil down, shoot twice as fast, be deaf, but be alive. How's that? You got to... As soon as a self-defense situ- uh, situation arises, you got to put in your earplugs. Hold on one moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been a band all my life, you know, before all this. I can't hear anyway, so, you know. <laughs> Did you think the orca was that uh, loud when you shot it? Not really. I mean, just as much as any... It, it was really loud in the shoot booth. That was one big thing. Outside, it didn't make too much difference, but... I didn't think it... It made, I I didn't think it was that loud. Yeah, outdoors it doesn't do much, but uh, indoors, because in our shoot booth, we have one of those uh, like water turny thingies where you stick the muzzle into a little rubber piece and it makes virtually no noise. We shoot five, five, six in there all day, and the people in the next room usually don't hear it. But the compensator sticks out of the little rubber thing, so it was loud as fuck. When I was first test firing the orca in there, uh, immediately after my first three rounds, people came knocking at the door going, Is everything okay? We thought there was shooting going on. They're like, are you not putting it in? And I was like, I am. The <laughs> hole is outside, though. <laughs> we made a comp gun. We made like so. One of our our partner, one of our one of our affiliates, made a barrel that has an integrated comp. You know, and then we built a slide that goes around it for the OEM Glock, and we're bringing it to market. It's congratulations. It sounds cool. Yeah, it's cool. The Orca. Where'd you get that name from? Because it has a blowhole. Yeah, I wanted to call it the glory hole. <laughs> Mark didn't my, like that? No, my wife was like, that. we're not doing that. <laughs> There's always some good story, like the method cut. Yeah. The method cut? We have a method cut, like, you know, methodical. Uh, it used to be named the meth head, but... It just <laughs> <laughs> it's just meth head. That's still my favorite cut. Yeah, Great cut. yeah we have, and then we, like the, we have the dirty Sanchez. <laughs> 
we have all these really awful names, but like when we t- when we take them to st- what's what's that called? Um, that's the dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Great name. Yep, yep. 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 What's that one? Uh the method. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you say method? Yeah, that's what I said. Method. <laughs> yeah. But it, it yeah, it was the it was the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, we it seemed comps I, it, my my great hope is like Glock won't cut a comp into any of their like that's just not Glock. I don't think they will cut a comp into any of their Well, they're comps. so creative. I, oh yeah. Yes, they're very creative and I don't Very creative. We got <laughs> we got a 17. We're going to cut a little bit off the front and that's going to be whatever. And then then next year We'll leave it, and I'm going to cut a little bit off the bottom. <laughs> and we just keep putting out new guns. Like, you got a Glock 17, you got a Glock 19, you've been mixing them up. I and mean, they don't care. Do you want finger grooves or no finger grooves? <laughs> <laughs> so my, my great big hope is that Glock doesn't have any intention of making comp guns, and so I'll have a good three-year window before they figure out they have to make them, and we'll just bring those to market, and hopefully it'll be cool. Nice. It's gotten pretty good good interest, and I've got, like, a pending thing with, with somebody, so it should be pretty cool. The 18, the full auto one, is compensated. I wonder if they'll reuse that design. Is it really? Yeah, the, the 18C, the C stands for compensated. Yeah, but that's a C. Yeah, but yeah, that's not. it might make a 17C. Yeah, but no, have, it's not. I think there's a rare amount of 17 No, there's C's there. out there, but the C's aren't, like, that's not like what people are doing now people are doing like the glory hole like people, <laughs> people are <laughs> doing glory hole. fucking best name <laughs> what do you call this slide it, it's the dirty sanchez <laughs> it's the fucking best <laughs> we took our we also we have a slide that um like we completely copied uh the terran guy yeah. like one of the first it was like the second slide we ever did and I, we just like because some guy came in and he's like, I want, I want the Terran gun. I'm like, all right, so we need to do this. And we made it. And, um, and then we started bringing the slide to market. And like, we're going to call, call that the greasy. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we going to call it the greasy? Because he's kind of greasy. <laughs> he's kind of greasy. No, no, no. Put a notch right there. That way we're not. You know, he's a nice guy. He's greasy. <laughs> what, um, what, what guns do you see women buying the most? What guns do I want them to buy the most? Or? Both. See, um, well, it's like this. Uh, we see a lot of people that come from here, so they have 43Xs and 365s. Really? Yeah, we get a lot of people. Do you get a lot of people from here? Yeah, a lot of people. That was my like, boss. Here. I went. Thank you very much. Really? For all the business you send me. Yeah. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you. No, seriously. All right? But uh, so we get a lot of like that. But other, like... Luke, you're going to start training next year. All right. We'll get you a license. We're losing a lot of money to Michael Gallon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Have him go through Julie's instructor school. Exactly. <laughs> now, so you do get a lot of women then. Yeah, I get a lot of women. Like, so a lot of women I'm are known for training women. All right. And so they are coming in and buying Glock 43Xs. Yeah. And then my dumb ass is like, all right, let me see your hand strength. <laughs> yeah, it's, this, this is what. Let's get you that 22 revolver. It's technique. <laughs> this, this was until, until yeah. they, they came out with a 43X, there wasn't really anything you know that was good for them that was good for them you know like and to the day i'm still dealing with well my husband got me a five shot aluminum revolver because <laughs> he said this was best for me for my first gun really it's got shitty sights it's got a 10 pound freaking trigger it only holds five rounds it takes a week to reload and i'd rather have you kick me in the nuts and shoot it because the recoil sucks <laughs> oh i am that guy though <laughs> you know? i would okay <clears throat> this is my argument with that all right I would rather have a girl buy something. Like so so my 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 problem is Yeah, but is, you're the guy that owns the great gun shop. I, I know. <laughs> Just I would, good, let her have it. I would rather have somebody like like for instance, if if a fifty five year old woman comes in mm-hmm. and and she's got no hand strength at all and but at least she's willing to learn. My go to is like the twenty two Smith revolver or the twenty two Magnum Smith revolver. I'm not going to give her a four. A four. I, I'm sorry. Like, I will say, like, and then I'm like, look, here, let's get you start here. And then let's at least get you something. Because I, I maybe I don't have patience. Like, Nate's really good with, with like, showing women how to do this. Mm-hmm. He's really good at it. I'm, You're welcome. I'm, fucking, <laughs> I'm horrible. But I, I am the guy. I will, I will suggest, why don't you get a 22 first? And then let's get you into something different. Here's Mike's card. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the card for Veritas. Go there, sell him a nine millimeter, and then then dump it on me. Yeah. Okay. Like, so don't you, worry, he'll show you. Like 
Just sign right here. He'll show you. Don't okay. okay. It's his card. That's even a better. Like, so I'm, I'm doing that from now on. It's Glock 43X all the way. And look, if you can't work it, this guy will help. Actually, Julie will help you. She's better. <laughs> <laughs> she had the better trainer. Julie's meaner. Than me, and, I, and I got a nickname of Mad Dog, and she's meaner than I am. I'm only, meaner, I'm only mean to the men. I'm oh, like, oh, well, look. <laughs> Walk around, Julie, with your finger on the trigger and see what happens. <laughs> really? Oh, do you see that? Oh. Uh, only a couple of times, and then they, uh, they learn. And if they don't, he's got a really good response to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll bite his finger off. <laughs> what do you say? I'll bite his finger off if he keeps putting it on the trigger when he should. I'll tell people I'll cut you. But those with live ammo, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, well, it doesn't matter. It's a good habit. You know, you got you to gotta build up good habits, you know. Show, if you show somebody, show, show somebody again, 80% of the time they're, they're having bad trigger discipline. It's very, um, even with me going, I've seen over the years, I'm like, you need to put your finger yeah. right here. Like, not, I'll bite your fucking finger. But you got to put your finger right here. And it, well, that's it, the first two times. It immediately, it, it, it puts them off guard and it, and it hurts the sale. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. It does. It totally, like, it, it, it makes, because then you're, you're telling them what to do and they don't like it. Yeah, they don't like it. I've had guns all my life. You still don't know how to do it? <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, you, but you see the picture, like the, the famous picture of the, the Delta guys guarding Norman Schwarzkopf. One of them has his finger right on the trigger. Well, here's here's what I'm going to say about Delta guys. Okay, <laughs> Delta guys can do whatever the fuck they want. Hey, I, I'm not saying <laughs> like I, those guys. Like, like that is those guys are not human. Okay, do you know do you know any Delta guys? I do. How smart are they? Pretty fucking smart. Pretty fucking smart. Not like, well, yeah, they're, they're okay. They're like, I can't get any of them on the podcast, and we'll do it. Right. Well, I've well, asked him. I'm yeah, like, would you, yeah. hey, would you please do a podcast? Nope. Yeah. I'll get your horse Gracie. Yeah. I'm not going on. Yeah. Like, well, what, I, but I want you on. How would nope. that conversation go, though? So you're a Delta guy? What's that? Yeah. Yeah, they won't admit Yeah, that. they don't yeah. say shit. But, but it's like I didn't say. I didn't say, so you're a Delta guy. <laughs> you come on my podcast. So I'm like, guy? you want to come on my podcast? Like, I just said, hey, you want to come on my podcast, please? Like, He's like, no. no, I don't do that shit. Yeah. <laughs> because my, All those guys, they do that shit. They ain't me. Like, like my what pictures about one of your friends? In all these fucking different countries, and yeah, 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 yeah. they're yeah. gonna find me, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, well, what about this guy, this guy, this guy? No, they're not gonna do it either. Yeah. Why not? Because they don't do that shit either. I'm like, Silent but profession. I see all kinds of people doing. It. He's like, yeah, they go. Those guys are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they can. They come in here. Yeah, they, like, so it's just like they're they're really fucking smart. Like, and it's not like. It, it's the di the difference is and not that anybody should do it. So because sooner or later someone's like, I watch a podcast and you said I could have my finger on my trigger. It's like, <laughs> like if, yeah, if you're a fucking Delta guy, you can put your finger on trigger. Like they're putting it on there on purpose. You know what I mean? It's not like they walk around like and you're like, hey, your fingers on the trigger. Like, oh, I didn't notice. You know, those, those guys are just they know. Yeah, it's the whole this is my safety thing. You know what I? You know they can do whatever the fuck they want. Like, they can do whatever the fuck when they you want. have that level of training it's not the world that we live in you know what i mean there was that one training video that got leaked i watched it probably 1500 times it's it's exactly what you said they're not yeah. human they're you not just, you just see them run through a building and every target has like four holes in the a zone <laughs> it's like they don't like, need to slow down it's like like when and i don't want to start a freaking controversy or anything but it's like when people say you know who's better delta or seal team six it's like delta Delta. Oh, I don't know about that. I like, no, let me no, explain no. it to you. Everybody in SEAL Team 6 is a SEAL, right? Yeah. Delta picks from everybody, like not just from the Navy, but they pick from everybody. And you get a, like, Delta is different. When, uh, when were you at Fort Bragg? I wasn't at Bragg. You weren't? I was at Campbell. Oh, so you're I was at Campbell. Campbell. Yeah, all right. So I was there, was it 87 through 89, but I spent, I was in Egypt, don't forget. Uh, you know, in Egypt. Ploy to Egypt. <laughs> Guarding the camels? Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> listen to people say stupid shit like, well, it's going to be 125 degrees out, <laughs> but it's a dry heat. It's like, so? Well, it's not, you know, bad. Like, tell that to a fucking pizza. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's fucking stupid as shit. Like, I, I have PTSD from people saying that. I was like, that's what I remember. What do you remember about Egypt? People saying stupid shit about the heat. It's hot. It's fucking hot. It's probably like, it's like Phoenix, right? Yeah, it's a dry heat. The dry heat, like fucking yeah, concrete melts. Call that the <laughs> 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 
Have it's, you guys been to Phoenix? Or have you been to Arizona? Oh, no. One of my uh, yeah. oldest brothers lives over there. I went to maybe. Oh, are you been to Arizona? Here. I have. I went to Utah to visit my family and then moved down there. Uh, they're right on the border of Arizona and Utah, so we just drove down. And yeah, no, the heat's no joke. Uh, I, I came from. This was right after I immigrated here, so it was, I went from literal snow to that, and it was not a great time for me. I, <laughs> I don't think I spent a lot of time outside. <laughs> That's a thing. That's a thing with Florida, right? Like I'm from north of Boston, all right. So people are like, oh, the weather in Florida is great. Like, how would you know? <laughs> <laughs> you leave your air conditioned house, go to your air conditioned car, to your air conditioned job, and then back, and then go. Woo, the weather's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The weather's great in November. Right. Like, there's nothing better than seeing a map. Like, I got a picture that I saved where it's the map, and it's in it's it's ice. Ice over the whole country, right? Except for like right when it dips down to Florida, then it's like 73 or something like that. And I send that to my friends all the time. Like, how's the weather? You know, like there's snow in every state except for Florida one year. Absolutely. I was in yeah. Arizona and it snowed. It snows there. And there's fucking killer tumbleweeds. It snows in Arizona? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, yeah. When I went there, it snowed. It snowed here. In the early '80s, it snowed here. It did. I remember, like it, like the 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 Chinese restaurant we went to called Charlie's, like the or the, the Asia restaurant up in North North Sarasota. Like the guy went on the roof to check it out because the snow landed on the roof and he fell off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's, <laughs> memory that's of my slippery. Childhood. <laughs> we went like, oh, what happened, Charlie? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I fell down. <laughs> Luke wanted to ask about backpack guns. Do you guys advocate that with your training? Fuck yeah. I mean, uh, yes. You do? <laughs> yeah. Nate makes fun of my backpack guns. We're not supposed to say Nate's name. Oh, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, don't say Nate. Don't say Nate. <laughs> we should give him a code name. So, but you do. You advocate, do you advocate flashlights on your carry guns or no? Uh, yes. I like flashlights. But, you, but your carry gun can't have a flashlight. I know. It's very sad. You should probably buy a new one. <laughs> Don't you get a, Don't you get a free one every 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 year from um, GSSF? Yeah, I get a couple. In there. So I will. So are you such a like miserable? It, this is going to be me. Are you Sit such down. a miserable bastard that you won't take a free gun? Who me? Yeah. Oh, well, I'll take a free gun. Well, no, I mean you get a, you get two every year. I will like understand. Sorry, that. but it, it, come on, free gun. What do you What do you do? Because how many years? That's eighteen. That's, My friends get them. Your friends get them. Why do they get them? Like uh, my buddy. Glenn, I, no, who is it? Who did I give one? I gave one to my mother. I think, I think you're like, I don't deserve a light rail. I'll give it to my friend. Well, that's, yeah, like, <laughs> is that I it? I can't spend, I don't the, I can't spend the $498 or whatever to get exactly. a light rail, you know? <laughs> I'm going to give him, I'll give the free one to my friends. <laughs> like, I got, I got three G43s, which I friggin' hate. Like, I friggin' hate it. I got three of them, you know, but I won't give them away because they were gifts. So, you know, I could actually like sell them and get a new one, but just because you said that, next time I'm looking through what gun, oh man, if I don't get this, Will's never gonna can make fun of <laughs> Every time I walk through, he's gonna go light rail, and I'm like, light oh, rail. oh shit. What about you, Julie? Do you have one? I do not. Oh my god! No, right. I still have a Gen Three Glock 19. I so love no that thing. Love that thing. No, we're talking about lights. Lights. Yeah, yeah, but I don't have a light on my gun. No. Okay. What about your backpack gun? My backpack gun, yeah, it's got a light on it. Yeah, a thousand freaking looms in case, you know, <laughs> the sun goes out. <laughs> what do you guys use for backpack guns? I got a uh, 300 Blackout with a seven-inch barrel that I built. It was. I have one, too. Yeah. We built them together. <laughs> no, no, I built yours. <laughs> I, got, I, was, I was sick back in 2017, and for, like, my birthday, my wife and my friend gave me parts so I could build a 300 blackout with a can on it. So, in 2017. Yeah. Which can? He actually built the can oh, with a tax stamp. Formal. With a tax stamp. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's pretty good, man. It's freaking pretty quiet with the subs in it. So. So you've been involved with the firearms industry locally, which is neat. Um, that's why, like, like I, I, I love seeing you guys, and I love, I love. Um, like we like I see at shot show some usually I bump into you and I, I see you around we you've been doing we've been doing the training with you and but you've been like your old school you forever. What's the craziest story you've heard or seen or been a part of in the local gun industry? Like what do you mean like 
training or anything like some crazy shits tons of crazy shits happened over the years what's the one story that stands out um like the one that aggravates me the most is like like and you guys will love my, me being tortured with me telling the story is i'm teaching class so i'm in you know i'm behind the desk and i'm sitting there and this guy comes in he's, he's standing behind his table or whatever and he goes like this he looks at me he goes hey <laughs> right and i look up I'm like yeah and he lifts up his shirt and he's got a security badge from illinois <laughs> right from like chicago or something like that he goes if you get stuck on anything let me know and i'll jump in <laughs> you know, i was like i was like what he goes pulls his shirt up again he goes just let me know i'm like i think i'm okay and then to be honest we get out on a range and he's looking at the gun right so i'm standing next to him, he's gonna fire his five shots right and he goes Boom! And he just fires one off. I go, you're done. He goes, well, well, I go, you're friggin' done. Get the fuck out. Right? So that's like, I've only failed like maybe two people. Because like one thing I'll do is if you don't pass, I will spend time with you. I'll literally say, come back in. We'll go over it again. Like, How do you fail? Like, trust, you almost shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> While you're wearing your security badge from Chicago. I got you. Hey. <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh, I'm trying to think what else is crazy. Oh, um, somebody tried to break in to take aim, and I think they got stuck in the vent. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like, straight out of the fucking movie shit. You know really? What I mean? <laughs> yeah, it, it's... You know, stupid shit like that. They tried to come into the ceiling? Yeah, through the ventilation. Did you guys find them there in the morning? Range. Yeah, I think they found it. It's like this. They either found them there or they had, like, been there all night or whatever and, and finally got out or something like that. Okay. They Through the ventilation. Like, it's like, let me help you out. Somebody thought you could fit through that little box. So they put a bunch of freaking steel in there so you can't make it through. You know, mm. they're like the thing like, it fell down, you know, shit like that. You know. My craziest story is um, like we had like before, you know, when we were still like the small shop mm -hmm. that was only um, a like really 600 square feet with 200 square feet of gunsmith area. We had these our best customers were these two girls and they would, you know, they were like angels, like angels are, are, are you know, are whales like they would buy. Like they would spend a lot of money oh. and you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. they're angel people. Like, and so they'd come in and um, I first saw them at the gun show and nobody would talk to them cause they were weird looking. And I was like, those are guys. <laughs> and, and my salesmen were like, they're not guys. And I'm like, those are guys. And I knew, and, and at the gun show at the time, like everybody, you know, it's fucking gun show and everybody's a dick and and they they'd come by and and i thought well if they're guys they probably don't have kids because they're dressed like women and i bet they got money yep. and um so i befriended them and i was real nice and they would always come and buy like one of the most expensive things we had every week um if, if we were in tampa palmetto sometimes orlando they would always come and they frequented us for years and um and it never came up but, and even like some of the salesmen would hit on them, right? And I'm like, look, they're guys. And they're like, no, they're not. I'm like, they're fucking guys. And, um, and so they, 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 you know, then one day. What was that look? So you knew it was hitting on them. Like, <laughs> no, this is, this is years ago. Years ago. Years no ago. one here. No one here. <laughs> like, well, like a, no, like even even like <laughs> there's it's not not just one salesman but two, <laughs> like both of the sales guys I had at the time were like, oh no, they're they're great people, oh I, I, I like them and I'm like, but they're guys, <laughs> I don't I, I don't think that's real will, <laughs> and um, and then one like week they didn't show up, and and I was like, all right, and then like Sarah said, sheriffs come in and like, hey. Could you look up this number? Uh -huh. And I'm like, yeah. And um, and we look it up, and it's like, yeah, and that's your gun that was used in, in a homicide. And Whoa. and yeah, and it turns out they were guys. And the one they got in a fight, and the one shot the other one with our gun, and the lady passed away, obviously. And 
and the neighbors and how she got caught where the neighbors found or saw the one trying to bury the other one no. with a backhoe. Oh <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> with a backhoe. So the neighbor, the neighbors are driving by and they're like, Hey, so-and-so, what are you doing? Uh, oh, just a little garden. Yep. <laughs> 10 foot hole. That's it. <laughs> it's a fucking backhoe. Like, <laughs> and there's like feet sticking out of the truck. Not going to get me with a shallow grave. <laughs> yeah. Like that. And that I was like, I was, and, and then I told the salespeople, I'm like, see, they were fucking guys. <laughs> one guy got pissed at the other one and the other one smoked the other one. And so we lost our like first big customers ever. Oh. <laughs> but that was the craziest shit that's ever, I think happened. Wow. And, and then, I, I got a background check. Uh, I got a ATF trace story for you. Okay, go ahead. So I'm sitting there, you know, I get, hey, they got an ATF trace. I go freaking get it. You know, I go through, I get the numbers and I fax it back to them. Right? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. The guy calls because I want to talk to the guy. So, like, hey, the ATF wants to talk to him. I'm like, hey, what's up? He goes, I want you to go back and I want you to check all the numbers. And it was like, no, it's been, it was released on December 31st, right? And he's like, no, it wasn't. And I'm like, I'm thinking, who is this motherfucker? Tell me. I'm looking right at the paperwork, right? So he's like, go find everything you can that has that, gun, that gun's number on it, and I want all of it. You know what I mean? So go find everything. And then way back in the beginning somewhere, it was changed from 13 to 31 when it was released. Oh, wow. So it was released on December 13th, right? So I called the guy. I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. I found a problem. Right. Right here is where it got switched, and then from then on, you know, whatever. Like, and he's like, all right. I go, how did you know that it wasn't released on the 31st? He said, because on the 15th, I found it sitting, or someone found it, sitting on top of two kilos of cocaine. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a North American arms derringer. <laughs> Perfect gun for that occasion. <laughs> like, if anybody plan on being a drug lord in the future, like, that's your goal. Not that it should be. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying... You probably want a better gun than a North American orange standard. That's We've got a gold-plated AK. That'll work. That's pretty Ooh. badass. We got a lot of you. We saw those at the SHOT Show. Yep. They, we, cool. we, we have had more than one occasion where, like, they'll call and they'll say, Hey, uh, so you're doing a background check on blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Okay, is he there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, we'll call you back. And then, like, two minutes later... Um, PD will come in and arrest the guy. <laughs> That's happened two or three times. Wow. Just then, keep him in the store. We'll be right then, there. Yeah. And then one time we had fucking Interpol show up. Ooh. Interpol. Interpol. Jeez. We had Interpol show up at the gun show in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale. What are they like? You have many Interpol guy before? Yeah. He had a, he had a fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> he had a fanny pack with a fucking 229 in it. Did he really? Yeah, he did. He was a fucking dorky ass looking motherfucker. <laughs> dorky ass looking I'm motherfucker. I'm blending in. He was a dorky ass looking <laughs> motherfucker with um with like dor dorky ass dad hair but not bald, stupid looking clothes on, a fanny pack, and he had a two two nine in it. <laughs> His Interpol. Wow. Oh, I thought the fanny packs were cool though. <laughs> they are cool. <laughs> They're still dumb as fuck. Uh, you got them. Okay. Uh, you got them. <laughs> so the 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 so you've got a Nintendo, basically for <laughs> guys and girls. And girls. And girls at your new place called the Self Defense Emporium. Yep. Or and explain what this thing is. What the simulator is? Yeah. So you so Mike's got a simulator which probably cost a gazillion dollars, state of the art, at your new place that you've built in Palmetto, right? Yeah. We're you, building. So. You're you're building a new facility in Palmetto that's gonna that's the self defense emporium, I think is your name. Yep. And it's got one of its claims to fame, or will be, is that it's got one of the simulators in it. Yeah. And, and, and it's like a big video game thing that, that you're only getting to play with, your, play with yourself because your friends won't come play with you. That's right. It's very lonely there. <laughs> what is, tell us exactly what it is. All right. So we have what's called a titanium training, which is a com company, okay? Titanium training. Yeah. Have you heard of this, Omar? Uh, I got to try it out at Chacha. Yeah. Uh, oh, you fucker. That was the thing you went and did? <laughs> that was the thing I went and did, yeah. Oh, yeah. How'd you like it? It was great. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Still yeah. won't come and check it out. Just saying. <laughs> right? <laughs> I shower and use deodorant and everything. <laughs> you know? so it's, but, it's called the Titanium Trainer. Yeah, it's a Recon 180. Titanium Training is the company. Recon 180 is ours because we have... 
three screens. So our, it's 33 feet long. It's almost eight feet tall. Okay. It's ridiculous, right? We picked it out because it's one of the, one of the simulators that we could make our own videos for. Interesting. Because they don't do a lot of civilian stuff. Okay. Right? Like, we are the only company in the world, who commercial company, to have their shoot house. Because we have a shoot house. Okay. And it's badass. Can, Explain what it does. The shoot house or the simulator? The simulator. Simulator is just, it, like, we bought it for the scenario so that you have scenarios where we can put people under stress. Like, because everyone else, I want to know what it's like, you know, what do I, you know, because everybody always says that. Like, you should learn to freaking shoot first. Then we'll work on you getting in a gunfight. How's that? You know, okay. but everybody wants to do it, and we'll be able to do that and add more stress in the shootouts. But it's scenarios, and the scenarios are, we can make you interact with the scenario, right? So you can get up there and have the guy talk to you. Like, you got to talk to him, like... I was showing my buddy today, and he goes, it's talking to me. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's like. It talks. It's, I, I go, I'm, I'm making it do that. Oh, okay. Because he was like having a conversation with me. It's like, hey, what's your name? Oh, my name's this, right? And it's like, what are you doing here? Well, you know, I was looking for something, you know, like that. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> right, you know, stuff like that. And was, the whole time, I'm like, don't shoot until I tell you, you know, stuff like that. But it's, we could put you, we could put you under more stress. And what happens is you get sucked into the scenarios, right? The second you start arguing with somebody, right that's actually just a video on a screen you have been sucked in and then your stress <laughs> goes up your anxiety goes up so we can get make it make training more realistic than standing on a square rain and just shooting into a piece of paper or doing something like that what kind of um guns do you use we have two glock 19s and two glock 17 laser pistols right and then we have recoil kits two for the 320 and two for ar-15s so it's an actual ar kind of yeah no, no, not kind of. It's, it's a an real actual. AR that you change the bolt out and change the magazine. Okay. And so the, you could show up with that. We dropped the kit in that you could train with yours. Okay, now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like I this. like that. <laughs> I like being able to bring my own gun. And there's, there's like all different kinds of scenarios. Okay. So we have over a thousand scenarios. And no. What do you think the most popular is going to be? Um, like active shooter. Like, like we're going to make our own. Okay. So. Like, honestly, I could come in here, once I get through the, the schooling, I could take a picture of this. Oh, could, fuck yeah. And we could green screen down oh, yeah. coming through the doors. Oh, oh I like that. Man. That's yeah. The yeah. yeah. was an active shooter one. I kept a civilian. <laughs> <laughs> was it the one where you're going down the hallway and he was... <laughs> You come out of this is that what it was or uh, yeah I was, I was it was like you're standing there and the video is like moving you through yeah. the hallways and you see people come out and you got to interact with them to get them to like move yeah. and then one of the ladies turns the corner and pulls her phone out of her pocket and points it at me and i shot her <laughs> and the sad point is he knew it was a phone he's like don't take video <laughs> like i told you no video it's like what, nate what, don't say nate's name what did, what, what did the salesperson say when you shot the person with the phone you're not supposed to do that <laughs> <laughs> sorry enough enough oh, they definitely did it on purpose that's I, i'm sure it was getting everybody because yeah. they did it in such a way that she literally like she pops out immediately reaches down into her waistband pulls out a phone and points it at the camera with both hands mm. it's like they definitely oh, did it on purpose yeah that would get you that would get you yeah it's no good. coming back from that <laughs> it's good so is is that going is so there's no or, or there's no commercial companies in Florida that have this that have the shoot house that have the shoot house. Yeah, what they have your... they have this like Longbow Key has the same system as us, except they only have two screens. We have three screens. What do you mean Longbow Key PD or yeah. okay? I think I think it's I think it's Longbow Key. PD. So law enforcement uses this stuff. They're all about law enforcement. Okay. They're all about law enforcement. Well, they have money. Yeah. Like, well, I won't tell you. What, they pay their bills. Like I can't tell you like the three companies that. They were just countries they were coming and going to as they were dropping in on us. Okay. You know, it's like they do a lot of, like, first of all, it's top notch, right? It, it, it's the best. It's freaking awesome. They have VR before anybody asks, right? Stuff like that. And, but it's really good. And the new director of production, the guy that makes uh, the videos, Daniel Phillips, is, is phenomenal, right? But the company itself, is so friggin' cool, the personnel. Like, they have a saloon. Okay. In their in their building. I don't know how good that is. Well, they, get, <laughs> they get done work at, at uh, 3.30. What if they get in fights? 
They don't have any. Live they don't have guns. any live guns in there. They're all. If you have a gun, like oh, that doesn't matter. They can just. <laughs> yeah, they can fire. Yeah. You know? yeah. Can you imagine all the production guys drinking at the end I of the day? day off. <laughs> You're gay. No, you're gay. You're gay. You stay Friday. <laughs> you know, just shit like that. You know what I mean? But do you like, not? Do you not concur? You think you know, you think all the production guys drinking together at the end of the night they wouldn't get into a fight? No, you think all your guys drinking together. Yeah, get into a fight. yeah. <laughs> Omar, I think it'd be fine. Really? Yeah. All right. Like they, they a, have kegerator Friday. <laughs> they had. It. They have a kegerator oh. with uh, what is it? Oh, Coors, uh, Coors, Coors. Coors banquet. Because. Mm. That's where Coors is made in Golden. Oh, exactly. Yeah, right. Right. But we got there, and the second day we were there, so the first day in school, they had their whiskey club. Okay. So we, we, had, we had class, then we started drinking for the demo, <laughs> right? Because the good thing is with the laser pistols, there's no, like, rule number 10 with, you know, no handling firearms after you've been using drugs or alcohol. Ah, okay. So just keep that in mind, right? So then... We had that, so we're getting all liquored up. And then they're like, oh, well, these guys are coming. You could have bachelorette parties. Yeah, that's one of the things. Like, like, oh, yeah. It's like this. I am cringing knowing that we have to have parties. Rent that thing out as. Yeah, you could rent out as party. Arcade game. You know what I mean? Oh, you could. Because it's just like I, I didn't want it to. <laughs> you know, and then it's just like. <laughs> the idea of the business is to make money. Like, okay. Make a lot of money doing that. You know, I'm not a babysitter, so don't ask me to come in and do parties, you know. And I'll kill somebody at a bachelor party, so don't. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is so ridiculously fun. We, we ran a competition, like one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And it was friggin' just awesome. Just So it's operational right now? The simulator is up. Can, people can rent it out and stuff? No. We're not open yet. <laughs> 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 is that because you don't want to be open or you don't have your CO? Yeah, we don't have anything yet. We're still building. Okay, it's you're just, still building. It's like we have to demo it and stuff like that. So, okay. But let's now, stop talking about people going into that building. Now, shoot house. What's that? What's a shoot house? What is your shoot house? We have a, um, what is it? Titanium training sim house. Right. So it's sim house. So we can do, you know, laser, airsoft, sim munitions. Okay, because so, Luke was looking into that. He wanted he wants to do sim munitions. Yeah, it seems like a lot of fun. Like good training, obviously. Yeah, as long as you're not wearing like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I want real training. Then you're like, <laughs> yeah, like the like, kid from the Christmas story. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> take so your snowsuit yeah. off. <laughs> what is, what is sim munitions? Do you shoot each other? Yeah. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You can shoot each other? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm into that. See the picture now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's bring it up. So when can we come up? Yeah. Sure, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah now I have friends. Sure. You, know, you guys. You, know, <laughs> you wanted friends. <laughs> hey, you guys should come up. You should come up. Now also like, oh, you got to shoot up? <laughs> oh, I didn't know you could shoot each other. Can, can you go there tonight? Like, <laughs> I'm down. Are we going? <laughs> Production versus retail. Yeah. Oh, trust yeah. me. I'll help you out with that. Compliance versus, <laughs> compliance versus internet. Like oh, we'll leave them. No chance, dude. Yeah. We, we we set it up so that we could take you, like, from zero to hit. We take you every, through everything. The live fire, you know, force on force. So you have you have live fire shoot house? No. Well, we have simunition shoot house. Okay. You can't shoot each other with nine millimeter. I know there's probably so many guys. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is it. I'm you know? building up my tolerance. <laughs> you want Start Saturday off? Up to, you work your way up. <laughs> yeah, you know, is, is simunition... You start like this, like, all right, this is going to hurt a little bit more. Is, you know? is simunition designed to, um, to, to shoot at each other? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is? Yeah. So it's just not like taking it and bastardizing it. It's like you're supposed to like compete against each other. It's no, like, but I, I'm glad you're giving me credit for that. You know what I mean? I mean, so it's... I took one of these so you could shoot at each other. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like um, it's like airsoft, but <laughs> on steroids. Yeah, yeah. Hurts a yeah, lot. I, I don't fucking know this shit. Like, hurts like a this. lot more. It's what it's what law enforcement military use. Okay, but there's different levels. Like FX rounds, like there's like the ones we have really aren't that bad. But like the guardians, like I got a friend who was a guardian, right? And they were training with the SWAT team, and one of the guys got shot, and he got shot between his fingers. That would hurt. Right? And the bullet, the ball ended up up here, and he had to go get it cut out of his hand. The simunition one. Yeah. Oh. Then you wear gloves. Yeah, wear gloves. Wear gloves. So that's all. Like people like put on all these pads and stuff like that. Oh, they do. And it's like you're kind of taken away from, you know, like did you put a cup on? Because I'm you're gonna get pain. <laughs> out of this so what? Like people with helmets and yeah, like and... you know, it's just like I learned that the first time. I put this big 
they had these things and I put this big thing on. I was like, holy shit, I can't fucking move. You know what I mean? So I'm like, you know what? I'll just get hurt. What do you think of it, Omar? Oh, it's really fucking cool. I've, have you I've done never, it before? I've never gone to do force on force. I have got shot with a sim gun because one of my buddies had one somehow. I don't know how, but... So it was Saturday night at the Omar <laughs> Festival, and you're like, you guys want to shoot each other? No, it was, it was more of, he's like, hey, look what I got. Oh, yeah. but, oh man. Oh. Here, there's air, airsofts for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, let's go. But the, the, the force on force, like Sim Round, it's really cool. I, 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 you, there's only so much you can gain from just shooting at paper. Uh, the, the level of you know just experience you get from having the thing shooting either back at you or just moving around left to right, even just hitting a moving target when it's moving like a real human being, I feel like can't really be replicated outside of you know I I think the video is about as close as you could get probably because you're they're actually yeah moving back and forth. But, but there's no fear. Yeah, the, the, have the, the fear, fear is the big thing because yeah. it it hurts like yeah. a motherfucker. It's oh it does. Oh yeah, I mean and that's the how that's, many times do you get hit. I, uh, with a sim, with a sim round, I just got shot once and it hurt for like a day. Oh fuck that! Yeah. <laughs> okay. But let me, let me, that he's that, little. I'm out. I'll watch. <laughs> no, no. Let me, let me put it this way: <laughs> we have we have three. Uh, they called uh, what are they? G nineteen, G seventeen X T's or T T. Yeah. Right. We have three T's. of them. Yeah. The sim guns. You gotta do FFLs on them. You gotta uh -huh. do 44, uh, 4473s on them. Okay. Like they shoot, they're. They qualify. Can I bring my own? <laughs> it's going to hurt a little bit more than a, <laughs> you can get your own. You know? No, yeah. Can I get my own? Yeah. Oh, I, so I could, I could buy one and trick it out. Dead Air makes cans for them. I know. They make sim cans. Yeah. That's how. That's the only only way I know like sim because every time I go to Dead Air, like, that's the sim can. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all right. What's that yeah. mean? Yeah. Cool. What's that? <laughs> Does it have, I wonder if it has gas. Is it, is it gassy? It's a bullet. It shoots. It's a cartridge. Does it have... You can, you can shoot SIM guns uh -huh. for the Florida Concealed Weapons License. Oh, wow. Because it shoots a projectile from a cartridge. Okay. And What's the propellant in these SIM guns? Like, it's like gunpowder. Really. Oh, is it gunpowder? Oh, They're okay. They're actual... Like, you load the rounds into the magazine, and it shoots, and the casing comes out, and someone hopefully gets hurt really bad. I mean, uh, good training. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Like... And you have, and you're gonna let guys do airsoft too. Yeah, you kind of work your way up. Like you're gonna say, this one's you don't want to do airsoft. Is this one? You? What's that? You don't want to do airsoft. Do you? Airsoft's cool because you could buy airsoft guns for 150 bucks that, and you could put lights on them and shit like that. Okay. You know, somehow it's a house. How big is it? How many square foot? I don't know. It's sitting on pallets right now because the sim house garage is not finished. Okay. But I want to put it together. It's freaking cool. Like, you can fight up against it. Okay. Because we were out there, and they had one. The window, yeah. Right? They had one set up, like, a little quarter of a one, like, two rooms, stuff like that. And I was, like, looking at it, and I was, like, can you fight up against this? And he goes, you freaking kidding me? I'm, like, can you? He goes, yeah, this thing's, like, you know, push it. Oops, sorry. I mean, break it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Eric comes across the car. <laughs> shit, shit. <laughs> right? So, you know, and then, like, they got windows that you can jam guns into and break the windows out. Mm -hmm. Like, so they just fall out. And he had one laying in up. He goes, this is my favorite part. And he's like, bam, and he kicks it. And I'm just like, he goes, yeah, the whole house is like that. I'm like, okay. It's got real doors, shit like that. What's your estimated um, launch date? It'll be in December. Like, I have a date in December, but I don't want to say it because. Because then it, cause, Murphy's Law will happen. Right. So, you know, the. Contractors telling me we're looking at this <laughs> date for your opening, and I'm going. Oh yeah, I know about that. Right, so, I know about contractors. Yeah, so, so don't. Yeah, so I ain't saying shit. You know, <laughs> December. <laughs> I think the contractors we hired to do our new building or our old building now, like they're still here doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like they never leave. Well, the, the new guy looks. Well, we did this. Uh, what else do you need? I'm like, well, <laughs> three more slot wall for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love the contractors. Oh, they're amazing. They, they are. Us, they built this room. I know they did. Crazy. This is like, it's nice. honestly, truthfully, this is the best gun shop I've ever been in. Oh, wow. That's like a bold it. statement. And Except like, the Benelli thing. It fucking broke. <laughs> 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 Those bastards. <laughs> $3,500 for a gun. You think they would give you a stand out <laughs> I'm they, just saying. They contacted us and like, hey, you, would you stick this Benelli display in your shop? And 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 I'm very like this is 
my shop and like this is where i live right here yeah. this little corner i'm here for 12 hours a day and um i was like man i don't want to fucking stick that big benelli thing in there and I'm like i'll help you brand it we have a good relationship with benelli so i was like yeah and i love the benelli rep i'm like yeah fucking throw it up there it's not gonna fall apart is it <laughs> sure enough they built a hell of a gu- hell of a gun but they can't fucking build a stand for shit they're super cool um you know so like with the hurricane um i th- like every so with the hurricane like uh, people called me or texted me so are you live okay cool um like sales people yep. companies customers you're right how are our guns <laughs> you know like like <laughs> nobody but nobody seemed to really give a shit except benelli really like yeah like the the executive of benelli wrote us this big page letter that said, hey, dear Will, blah, 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 blah. Like all this nice stuff, like, look, like, we know we know what it's like. That, that we know what it's like to to experience natural disaster. All these nice, like, heartfelt things. Like it could have been fucking AI for all I know. But it, <laughs> yep. was, it, was, it was nice to read. It was such a nice read. And I was like, oh, my God. And they're like, if you need anything at all, please don't be hesitant to reach out to our corporate office, to your local rep. Uh, we understand that these are trying times and, and and I was like, fuck, man. And then like the Beretta rep called up and he's like, Hey, can I send you guns? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for caring. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you got your shotgun though, right? Thank you, Ethan. Okay. <laughs> but it's it's we gotta it's, get on that one of these things. <laughs> yeah, we gotta you gotta get on that. I told him. I told him. The simulated people called me. It's, it's the lead instructor. Like, hey, it's a real. It's a, it's an interesting thing about the industry. Like, I, I think that to people's credit, like people don't, people just don't understand what goes on during a hurricane. Like, all they see is the news, and they either think you're dead, <laughs> and if you're not dead, they just your house blew away. They for, they they forget. Oh well, if you're not dead, everything's normal. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> they they don't understand what goes with not having power for eight days. They don't go. They don't understand what goes. Like you're you're there's eight people not coming to work because there's shit in their fucking there's yeah. trees in their in their in their thing or or kids can't I mean it's it's a it's a it's a very traumatic thing that can happen to the area but the most traumatic thing too with a local a local community is the economic impact that hurricanes have you know like it, it like you just took away fucking fifty percent of your market like fifty percent of your market cannot buy a gun for the foreseeable future. And that and that is you know detrimental to your business. And they, thank God we just I don't know how people just keep coming here. Like I don't know where they're coming from. Like I like isn't your house flooded? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking flooded. I don't care. But, well, that's that's a thing. Like we don't care. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I want that five thousand dollar gun right there. <laughs> yeah. Would you like an optic with that? Actually, I do. <laughs> night vision, maybe. <laughs> Next time, my wife get mad. My wife, she might get mad. Come home with night vision. <laughs> but your house is flooded. Yeah, flooded. Why do you think all, I need the gun? It's all fucked up. You know what I mean? <laughs> what do you um what do you guys think about the election? What do you think is gonna happen? I think they're gonna do something incredibly crooked and try to screw it all up. And will that cause unrest on our side? It'll cause a lot of unrest on our side. Okay, Julie. Not me and I wasn't there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I spend a lot of time loading magazines. I unloaded all of my magazines. From the hurricane? From the hurricane. I unloaded all of them. Because I didn't want, like, my gear having loaded magazines in the shop. Like, I've got hidden loaded magazines, but I didn't want, like, you know. Allegedly. Allegedly. All it takes is one sales guy. Ooh, cool Mac. (laughs) Yeah, all it takes is one sales guy. Uh (laughs) Yeah. This is what it feels like when it's loaded. Here. This one's do, got a do, dinosaur on it. Do you remember? Do you guys remember um, Ken? Oh yeah, <laughs> when he fucking tested Special the Ken. he tested the he <laughs> tested the microtech. Yeah, this we had this salesperson like he's like, if you open it against your leg, it won't come out. It's a great safety feature. And he yeah. fucking opened it. Work out. It went right through his leg. <laughs> oh. And he he starts gushing blood, and and I was over there or something, and and he goes back and they take care of him, and nobody tells me. <laughs> like nobody tells me. Don't tell Will. Like, like, didn't he almost pass out? Like, weren't you there, Omar? I wasn't there. No, I just heard about it secondhand, and I like started he, testing it out on water bottles instead. He, he turned whiter. Were you there? I was there. That was like one of the first days I started here. 
I was like, this place is wild. <laughs> Shit's crazy. Yeah. Did, he, did he turn white? Yeah, he turned and, white. Yeah. And did, did he collapse? I don't. Remember, I don't think he collapsed. Yeah, he no, collapse. but he was. How much blood loss was there? There's a lot. <laughs> Are you were there? He, Why didn't any of you turn to get his leg? Um, because he was ten and <laughs> he was running around like. A... <laughs> I can imagine ATF walks in. Hey, yeah. for Chris, what the fuck? Happened? <laughs> it wasn't a gun. None of your business. <laughs> it well, wasn't a gun. A few. A few days later, I was back here when it was production at the time, and I cut my pinky on a <laughs> opening a box, and I did not want anyone to find out because I'm like, I don't want to be like Mr. K. <laughs> you too. You and Ted, uh, come I, on, stand right there. Let me take a picture of you. I was talking to the old production manager, and I put my hand in my pocket. He's <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, nothing. I'm not bleeding. <laughs> I'm definitely, yeah, definitely yeah, not bleeding. Not bleeding. <laughs> Who cleaned up all the blood? Was it? Um, did Nate? Probably Don't say Nate. Nate's name. Yeah, <laughs> shit. You guys made him clean up a lot of nasty shit. <laughs> That's why he goes and gets the dogs. <laughs> hey, you coming back? Uh, no, I got like six more hours of driving around the neighborhood. <laughs> he had to. He had to pick up the mad shitter. Yeah. Oh, Remember? yeah. You guys know about that? Yeah. They have the picture on the on their desk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was this. So there was this homeless. <laughs> there was a homeless person who we call the mad shitter, and we've talked about the story on the podcast before, but. He first came around and he took a shit in front of Dean's office and Dean accidentally came out of his office and said, what are you doing? And the guy just looked at him and he's like, he said something profane yeah. to Dean. Help me wipe? Yeah. <laughs> like, help me wipe? <laughs> That's what he said. What he said. <laughs> and then yeah. he started running away with shit running down his leg and Dean got really mad and his, <laughs> his, his MMA fighting days popped out and he was going to go beat his ass and then he thought, well, maybe that's a bad <laughs> idea. Let's think twice about this. <laughs> and, then, and then the guy would, the guy would randomly come back um, every so often and f de desecrate our shed. <laughs> and one time, like, he did it really bad and he must have had, like, some type of explosion because he was everywhere. <laughs> And Nate cleaned it up with one of those trash pickers. <laughs> and he, he, was, he was like that. I don't know why. He just, he's probably like you. He's like, I, I, he's, like, <laughs> he's like, I don't deserve to tell anybody else to do this, even though I have a seniority. I should just pick it up myself. <laughs> Mike should be here because he doesn't deserve to have a <laughs> <Mike> should, <laughs> 43 actions to make him clean it up. And, and in your opinion, what is the best gun for home defense? Home defense? Like, yeah, home defense. I have been told by a lot of actual people like there's there's the shotgun there's you're the best with your handgun there's ar-15 right so i use actually use all three of these depending on what's going on mm. uh, it's like the hurricane had remington 870 you know downstairs with me stuff like that um i use a nine millimeter ar right it's got uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. infrared infrared uh Light, infrared, laser, you know, so I can throw night vision on, like, and I can hunt people in the dark. I mean, um, so I can defend my We home. like that. <laughs> naked. Like, don't break into my house, because I'm coming down naked. <laughs> I don't care. Are oh, you more secure than you? Oh, like, I don't care. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to get unfriggin' dressed. Like, I'm, wearing, I'm taking it off. Just the helmet. And I'm coming down. That's it. Just can you imagine the on. <laughs> And when the cops come, I'm not putting anything on either. Because <laughs> I want, I want the marketing. I want the free publicity. Like that's the guy that killed the guy when he was naked. <laughs> he, just, he wasn't wearing anything. Yeah, he's wearing a helmet and a sling. That's it. That'd be so crazy looking. <laughs> Cops show like open the door. I'm like this with the <laughs> AR, and the guy's like, "Hey, can you put that down? I got to put it down. I got no underwear." I'm like, "No, no, no, <laughs> no just, just hold it there." <laughs> oh, I see you touch your leg with the suppressor. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, well, dude, break into my house. <laughs> well, dude, it's been great having you. Oh, it's been a blast, man. I, I, we'd like to have you back, like the when it launches, if you can. Definitely. Can you come back like like after? I don't want to say like the date because yeah, I know contractors. Well, no, we can. But, but you love guys to... have to come see me first. Oh no, we, oh, we're gonna do, we're gonna make some type of the Christmas party simulation production versus retail. Have you guys run around like <laughs> but, inside? But the Omar, game? you have to be on our team. Okay. 
I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to fix it tomorrow. <laughs> Make sure you check Will's gun. Like, yeah, but this one's got not, you know. It's got a <laughs> yeah, I don't want to fix that one. Or, yeah, you know, like that. Yeah, yeah. But you still can't shoot people with nine. Oh, I mean, you can, but it's not fair. All right, well, we appreciate you coming. Oh, well, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, hey, um, thanks, guys. We appreciate you guys for watching this. If you got to the end, remember, if you have watched this, thank you so much. Smash the like button. Um, subscribe to our channel. If you can, check out our other social media outlets. We're on X. We're on Twitter, which is X. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. It's SCT Customs and Laser. We do this simply to try to get people into our shop and increase our business. Um, social media is very tyrannical and every bit helps. Every bit helps in creating our internet footprint. So please, if you're in the area, um, check us out in Sarasota, Florida, Bee Ridge Road, and we thank you. Thank you, guys. Nice. All right. Thank you. We're out.